of all, let's start with the main differences between the NX3 and the NX5. If you remember, on the NX5 we had on this uh, right side of the camera body uh, a slot for the HXR FMU 128 that was a solid state device uh, consisting on 128 uh, GB that could be directly connected through the, the USB, built-in USB connector to our laptop or to our system for ingest. Nowadays, as the, as the recording media uh, cost has decreased a lot, it makes no sense to, to build the, the customer with that interface if they are mainly not going to use it. So it's a sacrifice we could, we could afford. Uh, the second main thing we have we have removed from the NX5 is, is the SDI interface. We have a physical connector, a BNC connector, but in the in the NX3's uh, case, it's simply for composite. So if you need an, an HD output, you can use the HDMI connector, and in this case, uh, you can simply use an external converter, which is uh, cost-effective uh, nowadays. But what have we added as a difference to the NX5? First of all, uh, as you can see, the body is mostly the same and we preserve the LED and the, and the same lens. However, in this case, the, the sensor is different because uh, we, are, we are sharing mainly the same chassis on the NX5, on the PXWU Z100 and on the NX3. However, the sensor is different. On the NX5, it's triple one third inch sensor. On the Z100, it's single one by 2.3 inches sensor, 4K. Remember that is a 4K model. And on the, in the case of the NX3, it's a triple one by 2.8 inches. So uh, it's, uh, we keep the, the same triple sensor engineering on this camcorder but the sensor is slightly bigger than on the NX5 so this camera seems to behave a, a, bit, a bit better on low lights. Also one of the, of the main differences we have added is as you can see we have here the, the NFC logo, near field is near field uh, communication or near, near field uh, connection that allows us to simply uh, get, uh, bring closer another device they start a communication that uh, will be finally through Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi is obviously integrated on the, on the camera body itself, so we can remotely operate the camcorder. We will see that on, the, on a later video, but uh, that allows us to be much less intrusive on the stage or on the scene that we are, we are recording. For instance, on a documentary, on sports, on a live event, in which we don't want to operate directly over the, the camcorder. Also, another difference is that we have a slow and quick uh, motion uh, technology as a difference to the, to the NX5 and uh, we have a built-in torch. If you remember on the, um, on the NX5, this front part of the camcorder was simply a microphone but right now we have split it into two parts and the upper part is a torch that we will review on a, on a later part of the, of the videos. On the prior section, I was mentioning that the same 20 times optical zoom G lens is being shared amongst the Z100, the NX5, and the NX3. However, on the NX3, we have implemented a, a different way of doing the, the zoom that uh, oversees the, the optical range. So, as you can see right now, when I'm zoomed in or out, you can see that only one bar appears and it is covering the whole optical ratio. However, we can configure the classical way of doing a zoom, uh, a digital zoom. So we get into the camera set menu, zoom set, zoom sub menu, and you can see that on the zoom type, we have only a optical zoom, but we can set it to digital zoom. On a digital zoom, what do we have? What we have, uh, in, in fact, is from that point, from that midpoint onwards, we have a, a, an algorithm that consists basically on an average. So for instance, if we have one point of the image with a value of one, 
and another point with a value of 3, in the middle we can, uh, we can tell that it should be a 2. But with the third option that we have, which is the clear image zoom, you can see that we have also a double bar on the camcorder, but from this point onwards we are applying the uh, clear image zoom. Clear image zoom works in a different way. So, for instance, let's talk about this situation. Let's see that something is moving from left to right. So, let's see uh, the image. We can see that at this point there are some red dots on the image, on the left, that are moving to the right. So, instead of interpretation, for instance, let's say that the, the red ball is uh, coming in front of the white ball. So, in this part of the image, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Let, let's think you, you can. So, in this part, it's a white. In this part, it's a red. So, in the middle, on this part of the ball that could be blurry in some cases, we could say, okay, let's find the average between this white value and this uh, red value. But as in the past, we were seeing that the, the red dots are moving from the left to the right, we could, um, we could tell that probably in the future, at this point, there will be uh, some red points invading the uh, white part of the, of the ball that we can see in the background. At this moment, the same is happening. At this moment, the same is happening. So from this moment, some red dots uh, begin to disappear from the, uh, from the front ball here. So we can predict what is going to happen according to some templates that Sony, uh, Sony has discovered that appear typically on the, on the nature. So for instance, that, that is a typical situation. I have explained you something is moving horizontally. That is very typical when we are doing a pan with the, with the camera. We can, say, we can tell the same when we are panning um, vertically, when we are tilting the, the, the camera, the, the take of the camera. But when we are zooming, it's very typical that the, the points in the middle of the image, let, let's think those are these ones, when we are zooming in, those dots have uh, have become bigger, we can, we can tell that way. So there is a pattern that we have experienced. So those kind of patterns have been ingested on, on our camcorder so that we can predict what's going to happen and we can provide a much more efficient um, zoom algorithm that works much better than the typical digital zoom that we can obviously also incorporate on the, on the camcorder. HXR NX3 uh, in Europe we provided with the ECM VG1 high quality microphone but we don't uh, provide the, the battery which is the MPF series that you can see here neither the battery charger so you will need to purchase it uh, uh, apart or on a bundle or maybe you can you can recycle your batteries that you were using with the NX5 for instance but what we do provide is, an, is a built-in 8-LED torch that uh, you can see here. Maybe you remember on the NX5, uh, we had on this front part only the microphone, the tally and the infrared uh, receiver. While right now on the NX3, we have integrated on the, on the upper half of the front part that torch that I am talking about. So if we start it, it doesn't work. Why? Because right now we are operating the camera via a DC. The moment I disconnect the DC power and it only is fitted by the battery, you will see that it works. Sorry for the flash. And you can see that now it is, it is working. So be careful because it only uh, due to, to consumption, uh, to, to, power, uh, to the power source, to the engineering of the internally of the camera, 
it only works with the battery, not with the with DC power. So uh, also be careful because the, the light that it provides is about uh, 5500 uh, Kelvin. So as you can see, it's very, very powerful. So you will need probably to have a, a, some diffusor here on the on the front part of the of the torch to avoid uh, uh, your interviewer to, to be blind. So it's very powerful. But remember, uh, uh, about uh, 5500 uh, Kelvin. So very nice for for those situations in which the, the light is very low or I need some help from an external light and I don't have my torch on my on my package because for instance for flying I don't have it on my luggage due to, to weight or, or to, to space.